Warriors here. Let's talk about central heating and how to pipe up a boiler jig. Here we go. Let's start with the basics. And what have I done? I've made a nice visual aid for you all. So here goes. So on a central heating return, you always have a magnetic filter that always goes in the return to protect the boiler, getting any magnetite inside. This one's got a filter on top. You can screw it. You can drain it out as well. There you go. It's great to use as a dosing pot as well. You can put your inhibitor in. So that's the central heating return. Also, on the central heating return, you will always fit the expansion vessel because the expansion vessel has to go on the coolest place so the neoprene diaphragm doesn't get damaged. Here we've got the discharge. So the discharge always goes somewhere safe so it doesn't freeze and become a trip hazard. Sometimes the discharge can be linked into the condensation pipe, which we'll come to. Then on this fake combi boiler jig, you have the cold water pipe. The cold water pipe has a descaler, has a descaler on nook. So you have to fit a ma magnetic filter and a descaler to meet manufacturer's warranty. And some boilers come with 10 year warranty. So you've got to be a good installer and meet their criteria. So a descaler. This one is a Furnox one. Highly recommend Furnox, been using them for over 10 years now, and they support the charity. Wow. So, magnetic filter, descaler. The further south you are, the more protection you need against um, scale. You might be better off with a zeonolite, like a base exchange unit. So the water will go through it, the salts will break down the water molecules. They'll protect your showers, your taps, your shower heads, and the water will taste better as well. And also, um, a real water softener can be beneficial to your skin as well. If your combi has loads of plastic components inside, you can also fit a mini shock arrester that will absorb expansion and protect inside the boiler. So on a cold water main, you also have the filling loop. Because a combination boiler is a sealed system, filling loop, Always explain to the customer what the filling loop does to prevent any fault finding or boiler breakdowns. Remember, professionalism wins trust. So you've got the filling loop, it is always connected on the flow. And now people question that, but the reason it's on the flow, if the filling loop is connected to the return and the cold water, freezing cold water, hits the heat ex exchanger, it could damage it, it could crack the actual heat exchanger. So the filling loop goes on the flow after the burner. Here we have a hot water pipe. It is free from isolation valves. It's 15 mil, so no matter really what your combi is, it's usually always 15 mil. Um, then you have your flow. Did you know on some boilers, if it's quite big or if it's commercial, on the flow you could actually fit a deaerator? Because each time the boiler heats the water up, micro bubbles are released. And a deaerator is different to an automatic air vent. What a deaerator does, it gets away the gets out the micro bubbles using like a little mesh. So the flow has the filling loop going to it, and it also has a deaerator. I haven't put one on this example. Here we have the condensation pipe. The con the condensation pipe has to come through the dwelling an inch and a quarter. That's to prevent freezing. The condensation pipe can't, cannot be any longer than three metres long externally. When it comes to fitting a condensation pipe externally, I always highly recommend the Condensation Pro because it insulates the pipe in UV um, protected insulation, vermin proof, and I recommend the Condensation Pro. Look it up, research it, Condensation Pro. Insulate your condensation pipes. Here we have the electrical supply going to the boiler. Heat resistant cable. Heat resistant cable. So when you're wiring the boiler up and you put it through the bottom of the boiler, always pierce a hole, never cut it, because then you, the boiler is not airtight. You don't want to damage the casing. So pierce with a little screwdriver and throw the cable through. And here it is heat resistant cable. And what I've done here is look, I put the electrical 
supply and conduit. Doesn't that look nice? Doesn't that look professional? And I put a little neon light there so the customer knows if it's on or off. Finally, remember the boiler must have a three amp fuse. You've got to use a three amp fuse because what the three amp fuse does, it protects the PCB. If you're fault finding, if a component overheats, it will blow the fuse rather than the boiler and the electrics. So this is Dan, he's going to make himself a fitting to fit the drain off into. Look at this. So drill the hole into the pipe. What's that make? Setting the pipe, that's the depth gauge. So that gives you your size of hole, which is determined by that. Oh cool. And where, what kind of tool is that? What make is it? It's Rothenberger. Cool. So that drills your hole, and you're gonna form the connection. Screw that down, hook it Slide through in. the hole. Cool. And then that extrudes the thing copper. to put your, yeah, it extrudes the copper so you can obviously put your drain off in there. Yep, and we use a ratchet cool. to pull it out. That's it, so you've extruded the copper, so now what do you do? Now, clean it up and you just solder it like any other end feed fitting, but the secret here is you have to file a, te a groove yep. into your fitting so that doesn't protrude into too far, into, too the far into the pipe. Cool, so we'll see that in a minute. So, bit of flux on it, jobs are good then. Pop it in. <laughs> Make sure it hasn't gone too far. There we go. Cool. And then we just sold it in the conventional way. And it's freezing. That's why we, we love plumbing. plumbing. <laughs>